Welcome back to Yoshi Entertainment, everybody. So there is this young man, I guess he's an entertainer. That's the best way I can really describe him by the name of Josh Ovskrosky. I hope I said that right. And if I didn't, uh, that's going to be his name today. But basically, this man came out and he's been saying this. This is just the first time I've been reporting on this. But he came out and he did these interviews with these people, these podcasts, if you will. And he was talking about how, once again, more proof to just add to the pudding that we already have that's just been mounting up for all these decades. He went to one of the infamous house parties, if you will, that take place at P. Diddy's residence, P. Devil's residence, I meant to say. Now, I'm going to say allegedly, but this is what came out of his mouth. He said he was at that party. He said he shouldn't have been there. He admitted that much. He said, I kind of was like a tag along. I shouldn't have been there to begin with. Now, he said out of his own mouth that he had a particular substance. I'm not going to say what it is on here. If you want to know which one it was, you go look at the interview. He had a substance that he was already high on. He said this out of his own mouth. Then he said, I was going through because he was looking for the bathroom. And see, that's how people always get caught up in these situations. Forget being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was in the wrong place, period. But anyways, he was looking for the bathroom. He was going through all these doors. Got lost because he said the house was like a maze. He was looking through rooms. There was a bunch of, as he said, beautiful women, but he didn't mess with them because that wasn't his cup of tea, obviously. And then he happens upon this room where he alleged that he saw P. Diddy spooning with a producer, a music producer, by the name of Felix the Cat. Now, I'm questioning a grown man's nickname being Felix the Cat, but whatever after he was just standing there allegedly kind of just being like oh my goodness this is p diddy and this other guy they basically were like you're disturbing us and kicked him out and then he got onto this podcast and was basically saying these things the podcast got put out there then he shortly thereafter receives a phone call from mr p devil combs letting him know well not himself but basically somebody i believe if i'm not mistaken that was representing p devil combs basically telling him that you need to go back on that podcast and act like that was a joke that was a joke. Say, ha ha, you're a funny man. You didn't actually see that. You were just cracking jokes like how comedians do or how they're supposed to do. And he basically said, no, nah, I'm not really doing that. And then he went on to another podcast and they basically pre-recorded it because they were like, now we didn't heard you say some crazy stuff. And what you're not about to do is get us put off air, uh, have us out here allegedly, you know, about to get jumped by some people sent by a certain person because we said some stuff that uh, we put some stuff out there. Let you say some stuff on this platform about somebody who we shouldn't have let you say about. Allegedly, the people down there at Hot 97 said that they didn't want to put it out there because allegedly, you know what happened to Kid Cuddy's car when he tried to mess with Diddy's girl, allegedly. We all been saying allegedly, but allegedly they told him this to his face. We will not air this interview because you know what happened to Kid Cuddy's car. So what does that tell us now? Once again, people will love to say, oh, you're just jumping on the hate train now. You're just trying to throw shade at him, get more money from him like these other people have. When this man said, I've been telling y'all this since before this all hit the fan, since before the first lawsuit against him that happened just last year with Cassie. He's been saying this and his story never changed. He even said that he was scared because they were allegedly threatening him. Allegedly. So once again, there should be no wonder why people were afraid to come out. If this grown man, and this is a white man, not a black man, a white man, this grown white man said out of his own mouth that he was nervous, he was scared because they were sending him allegedly threatening messages or they were sending him threatening phone calls because they didn't want him to put any more out or keep talking about it. Why in the world are people still harassing, especially these women, for not coming out sooner? So there should be no wonder why people haven't come out. People want to act like people don't get threatened into silence. It happens all the time, unfortunately. I guess it got so bad with him, you know, concerning for his safety that he basically said that he was doing more of these interviews, allegedly, as a safety measure. So that if anything happened, then people would know or maybe because he came public, he came out publicly you know, that might decrease the chances of somebody doing something to him. Because once again, if something happens and we know who to point the fingers to first. But it's sad that it even got to that point. He was even joking on one of the podcasts about, oh, if something happened to him, he could turn it into a, like a James Bond film or like a Jason Bourne film or something like that. And it was crazy. I didn't like how he was joking about it. Let me be honest. It was a bit morbid to me how he said that like, you know, because the guy who he was doing the podcast with was going along with the joke, if you will. And he was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you could have like these tapes. You could be like Jason Bourne. You could be like running down the street uh, in like France, driving a motorcycle. He was like, no, you would be Jason Bourne because he said, he would be deleted basically and he would have to have the tapes and I was like this is not funny this is not funny at all I know he's trying to make a serious situation 
funny and add some humor to it, but this is not funny, or at least it's not funny to me. Like I said before, I really don't know how much more proof these people need out here to believe the truth, but once again, the proof is in the pudding. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and uh, not everybody is lying. Y'all let me know what y'all think and how y'all feel about all of this respectfully down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all all have a very blessed, beautiful, and safe day.